I think when we think about Japanese omurice, we see it all over Japanese media, in anime, and all around Japanese culture. In today's recipe, we try to make it a little healthier by adding a lot more protein and dropping the fats by a little bit. And also, since this is a spar fitness, I thought it'd be a great idea if we meal prepped it for the week. So, let's get cooking up, guys! Omurice is definitely a bento box classic that you can find all over Japanese media. In today's recipe, we're going to be focusing on capturing those same awesome flavors while maintaining a healthy balance of macronutrients. Let's get into this, guys! Let's start it off with a fourth cup of carrots and a half cup of onions. We got a fourth cup of green onions. We got a fourth cup of peas and a fourth cup of corn. We got 12 ounces of chicken breast. We got three cups of rice. We got two tablespoons of olive oil and one tablespoon of flour. We got two tablespoons of allulose and two tablespoons of ketchup. One cup of water. One teaspoon of beef stock or tashira. Two tablespoons of soy sauce and one tablespoon of rice wine vinegar. A little bit each of salt and pepper and half a dozen eggs to finish. Let's start off the recipe by prepping up our ingredients. When it comes to fried rice, we want to make sure that everything is ready to go into the pan as stir fries really require lots of intense heat. If we're not quick, things are going to burn and any burnt flavors will ruin the entire dish. Let's cut up our chicken into bite-sized pieces and although we cut everything else off screen, you should dice up everything pretty evenly so nothing gets burned. Now that everything's all prepped up, let's make sure we take care of the glaze that's going to coat our egg mixture. This sweet, sour, and savory glaze is really what makes omurice so special and really pairs nicely with the omelette we're going to wrap the fried rice in. Into a pan, let's add in 2 tablespoons of oil and 1 tablespoon of flour. Let's cook it up until the flour gets a nice brown color on it and top it off with a cup of water. Make sure to mix it up so the mixture can emulsify or else you'll end up with a liquid rather than a sticky glaze. After mixing and letting everything combine, let's add in 2 tablespoons of allulose, 2 tablespoons of soy sauce, 2 tablespoons of ketchup, half teaspoon of beef stock and one tablespoon of rice vinegar. Cook for around three to five minutes on low heat while mixing, mixing occasionally to make a really nice glaze. Remember, mixing is crucial in these stages or else you won't get a nice glaze to top off the omelet. Now let's get to the main event, which is going to be the fried rice. Since we prepped everything up and everything is going to be cooked swiftly, there's no way our fried rice can get ruined. Into a pan, let's add in a minimal amount of oil and fry up some green onions. After the green onions get a minute or two, let's add in the chopped chicken and season with a little bit of salt and pepper. Now we can add some carrots and any chopped veggie that you have so we can get some really awesome flavor here. Add in the rice and season with a little bit more salt and make sure to thoroughly mix everything in. If you don't have a wok, then everything is going to be flying everywhere, so make sure not to lose too much rice in this process. This wouldn't be omurice without a good omelette on top of the rice. So into a large bowl, let's add in 6 large eggs and mix thoroughly with a little bit of salt and pepper. The trick to a really smooth omelette here is to make sure we strain out some of the larger bits of egg as we can really get this velvety omelette that covers the rice here. After the eggs are strained, it's pretty simple here to make an omelette as all we need to do is pull in the sides of the omelettes once we see the insides get a little bit opaque. We tried that stupid BuzzFeed tasty egg trick with the omelette but it ended up looking pretty gross. So honestly, just pull in the sides and you'll end up with an evenly cooked omelette. If you can figure out that flour flour omelette trick and please let us know how you guys managed to pull it off. A good omelette requires medium to low heat so make sure not to go too hot here or else you get something really rubbery. A good time that worked for us was around 3 minutes on medium heat. Extract the omelette to a plate and let's get to making these bento boxes. So we filled each of these bento boxes with around 1 cup of the fried rice mixture. Since we got 6 eggs total, we can roughly estimate that there are 2 eggs in each of these bento boxes. After calculating all the ingredients we used, each of these bento boxes came out to 646 calories with 50 grams of protein, 32 grams of carbs, and 35 grams of fat. Although these are a little high in fats, you can always customize yours to fit whatever your dietary needs require. If you're trying to cut down, then feel free to use less oils and add more protein. If you're mindful of your carbs, try something like cauliflower rice and minimize the calories overall. This was delicious and reheated so well. If you're looking to buy these bento boxes, I'll make sure to put the link in the description below. Good quality bento boxes keep your food fresh, so I can't stress it enough to find a good container for your food. Now that everything is all ready, all we have to do is pour over the glaze that we made from earlier. We used to talk about monk fruit sweetener on this channel, but I recently made a new friend who happens to be a food scientist. She told me that monk fruit sweetener is actually just erythritol with monk fruit extract, which means we're not really using monk fruit sweetener in these recipes. She told me that allulose is a much better substitute for sugar, as it caramelizes just like sugar and is a lot better for us overall. I can definitely admit that she was completely correct and this glaze really turned out to be amazing. They were sweet but hardly had any calories from sugar. Allulose is definitely the way to go, so let's actually avoid erythritol if we can. You can find allulose anywhere in your local grocery store here in California or you can order it online. We'll make sure to put the link also in the description below. Trust me, you won't be disappointed. Thank you Lisa for that amazing advice and I wish you told me about monk fruit sweetener before I made like 80 videos. 
So that is really it for today's recipe. I just want to say thank you so much to anyone who's been watching these videos and we appreciate your support tremendously. If you're looking for some more recipes that we haven't featured on the channel, then make sure to check out our cookbook that we have on our website. It features 15 of our Asian inspired recipes that we haven't covered in our videos. So if you want to help support the channel, we would forever be appreciative. This is it for today's recipe, but make sure to like and subscribe to let us know what other recipes you guys would like to see on the channel. Thank you guys once again for your amazing support and we hope to see you guys on the next one.